Hi everybody. I'm happy to see you guys again. So we're going to start our lesson. Today we will be doing science in the Bible and I have a small riddle that I want to start off with and then um, I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to talk, think about it and then I'm going to give the answer. So the riddle goes like this. Give me food and I will live. Give me water and I will die. What am I? So I'm going to say it one more time. Give me food and I will live. Give me water and I will die. What am I? Okay, the answer is fire. So I hope some of you were able to get that. So what are some of the things that fire requires? So fire 100% all the time needs fuel, oxygen, and heat. So fuel is um, something that can get the fire that the fire can like eat up so it'll be like gasoline gasoline will be able to use be used as fuel it could be um wood really really dry wood um leaves those are things that can be used as fuel so then we have oxygen which is naturally occurring in the air all around us so we need oxygen in order to start a fire and we have heat so if it's too cold, the fire can die out. So it needs to be warm enough so that the fire can keep going um, and get bigger and bigger and generate heat also. So what do we use fires for? We use them to keep us warm. We use them to heat up our food and heat up our water. We use it to give us light. Fire is necessary for our daily life. You don't really see it all the time, but we use this fire to to just give us the life that we have so how do you start a fire there are two ways to start a fire you can start one by human hands so that's if you go and you know for example you're camping and you start a fire okay you start a fire you know to cook your marshmallows to make your s'mores to do that so that's a human made fire and then um fires can happen like um, through like a natural disaster but that's basically when a lightning strikes something very dry and that will cause that will spark a fire and the third way which doesn't happen all the time is called spontaneous combustion so that's when there's not all of the necessary ingredients um, there to make a fire but it just it just happens because it's either it's so hot or it's so dry that the fire just starts so in the Bible oftentimes we see that God will send fire or that he appears as fire in situations that don't always make sense so the first situation is uh, Moses and the burning bush so we all know that story very very well and Moses is in the wilderness okay and all of a sudden he sees a burning bush so somehow this bush spontaneously comb combusted so it caught on fire by itself and it wasn't eating up the wood the wood was fine it was just in flames that's not something that we see so that's very strange um, another time that we see that God sends a fire or appears as fire is when the children of Israel were also in the wilderness so after they had left Egypt many times God would send a fire he would appear as fire on top of a mountain now I've never really heard other than lightning striking I've never really heard of a mountain just randomly bursting into fire that's kind of strange um, and so he would use that fire to show his glory and to come and talk to his people so another occurrence is when prophet Elijah was um, competing against the prophets of Baal and he wanted to show that God was almighty and that God was the only God. And so what he did, he did something so strange that I've never seen someone do when trying to make a fire, is he built an altar and submerged it in water. He There was just so much water everywhere. And he prayed to God and God sent a fire and it consumed the altar. And even though the altar was soaking wet, 
there was no fuel. Sure, there was oxygen, but there was nothing for it to eat up. There, It was not in the perfect conditions for a fire, but still a fire was able to be set because God said it. So, um, like I said, oftentimes God shows his glory and he shows his power as a fire, a consuming fire, which kind of leads us into our um, memory verse. So our memory verse is Luke 3, 16. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So I just thought it was very interesting that God shows up as a fire and later on in the New Testament, it says that God's going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And we know that the Holy Spirit is usually uh, associated with fire. So I just want to talk about what some of the things that fire does, that fire can do in our lives. So one of the things that it does is that it cleanses. So when you see that, um, for example, you can take gold that is not so pretty and it's not yet, um, it can't be a ring yet. It's just gold that maybe you dig up. What um, welders do is that they heat it up to till it's boiling, past boiling, till it's super, super hot. And that way they're able to mold it and form it and to take the shape that they desire it to take. So that's something that fire or God can do in our lives is that he can take something that is not very good, um, cleanse it and form it and shape it so that it can be something that is good and that it's useful. Another thing that fire or God can do in our lives is he can produce new things. So if you've ever, ever um, heard on the news about forest fires, uh, one of the things that is beneficial, it's good about forest fires, is that after a fire has come, trees and plants grow so, so well. Um, they grow like just better than they were before. They're always better than they were before. And that's something that God can do in our lives is his fire comes and it cleanses us and it makes us better than we were before because it burns up everything that is not needed in our lives. Everything that you know, doesn't make us look nice and shiny and pristine. Um, and he removes them and he makes us into something new. So I just want to repeat our memory verse one more time. Luke three sixteen. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with water. And I think that this lesson goes really, really good into something that's coming up in two Sundays, I think, two Sundays, um, which is Pentecost Sunday, when we know that the Holy Ghost came. And like we see in the verse here, it says that Jesus will come and will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. So I hope that you guys like this lesson and I'm happy to be able to talk to you guys again. Um, miss you guys so much and can't wait to see you soon. Bye.